Ho, ho, ho. I'm Michael Salomon. I'm Jana Wolf. And this is The Sleeve Chef. Thank you everyone so much for coming. I want to thank WMAR2 for their beautiful studios. And I want to thank the marketing department at GBMC and the Comprehensive Obesity Management Program. I am the Director of Nutrition and we are going to be doing comfort foods today. Mm, mm, Tis mm. the season. Tis the season for indeed. all the comfort foods. Absolutely. So what we did last time was we thought, okay, what are our favorite comfort foods? So these are our, our personal favorite comfort foods. Swedish meatballs mm. and mac and cheese. Love them. But they're all going to be bariatric friendly. Correct. So I am so excited to cook these tonight Me and talk about too. the differences uh, because agreed. we need some alternatives because we all know that this season lasts until January 1. Easily. Okay. So let's get started because I want to know what we're doing tonight. Yeah. So we are doing, like Jana said, two of our favorites. We are doing a mac and cheese, uh, and we're going to use the Impasto Bowl um, macaroni for it. So super excited about that. And we are going to do a classic, classic dish, uh, Swedish meatballs. And we're going to add some health to it uh, by basically reducing our uh, fat content and upping our protein content through leaner cuts of beef and mm -hmm. pork. So Very nice, good. nice, nice, simple way of doing this. Again, uh, without really sacrificing that flavor profile that we all know and love so much. And I want to remind everyone um, that's tuning in, you can feel free to ask us your questions, mm -hmm. give us your comments. They can be related to the dishes that we're cooking or just in general dietary or nutrition related or cooking related. Absolutely. So feel free to send those in. Um, I want to thank Chris, Brenda, uh, Thelma, Nicole, everyone for joining us. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I have a confession to make. I have not tried. Well, I, I just tried for the first time the Impossible right before we started. I had a feeling of what it was going to taste like because the ingredients are high fiber. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially an oat fiber, wheat fiber, wheat protein isolate, and egg whites and a small amount of flour. So hmm. that's it. Yeah. That great. makes it that chewy texture yeah, that we're absolutely. looking for with right. the pasta. That, 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 and and on, a, on a cooking note, guys, uh, for the pasta bowl cooking, uh, again, keep in mind, this is going to cook like your traditional pasta will. So you're going to want to cook it the same way. So you're going to boil the water, bring it to a boil, rolling boil, mm -hmm. add your salt in then. Don't add it in beforehand. Add your salt in after it comes to a boil. Put the impossible macaroni and cheese in and or macaroni in and i would honestly say cook it and check it after like three maybe five minutes at the most because you really want it, it's going to cook a lot quicker because keep in mind it's not that traditional flour base that you would have from a very traditional you know semolina pasta etc all right awesome. all right let's, so let's get it. rocking and rolling here so we're going to start with just a little bit of butter for our impossible macaroni and cheese here all right, and just a side note while you're opening that up. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a whole conversation about um, using regular cheese, using low-fat cheese. We used some low-fat cheese in this um, recipe. It's going to change the texture a little bit. Okay, so are we making a roux right now? Uh, no, actually, we are just making a very basic sauce. We've got a little bit of uh, fat-free milk in there and our butter. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, guys, you notice we used uh, traditional butter. We didn't use margarine. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna watch our fat content by reducing the fat in our cheese, in our Parmesan, as, in our, our, our cheeses, as well as in our uh, dairy. Okay, great. And um, Thelma asked if this would be approved during starch-free, and it absolutely would be. It looks like Great the question, carbs Thelma. are very high on the nutrition label, but the net carbs are actually technically very low um, because the, the fiber is so high. Absolutely. Such a good point. Okay, and with, right. with this low-fat cheese, like I was saying before, the texture might be slightly different than your traditional mac and cheese. So if it's a really special occasion and you want that really nice creamy texture from regular cheese, mm -hmm. yes, you can forego some of those calories, but just be aware that higher fat, um, higher fat options might upset the stomach a little bit yep. soon after Great, surgery. great point. Yeah, right, and, and, always, and always err, you know, as a, as, a, as a fellow patient, I will always say err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. 
You know, you know yourself, you know your own stomach. Like for me, I love spicy food. I had to wait, honestly, probably a year and a half, two years before I could go anywhere near the spice that I would normally have pre-surgery. Right. So err on the side of caution, you know, just to slowly work up to it. Same mm -hmm. thing with high fat content, you know, et cetera. Okay, great. All right, so see how the sauce is thickening up really, really nicely here? Notice how that's just this nice, rich consistency. Beautiful. So we've got our, so this is about where we want. We don't want it to be super thick. So we're going to add our two pasta bowls here. And then, a little pro tip here for you, friends. Rather than trying to go directly into the bowl, we're going to go back into our pan here. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. All right, and um, Lori was asking which stores have this pasta, and this pasta you can actually get online. It's at thinslimfoods.com. Oh, nice. There you go. And then we'll use this. We'll go right over top of our mac and cheese here. There we go. Get that nice and incorporated. Oh, it looks so good. So that was a super easy Yeah, dish. see how simple that is, guys? We've got all of our mac. We've got our mac cooked right here. Going right over top. I reserved a little bit of my cheeses as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put those right on top. Another thing that might be kind of fun to play around with is putting a little bit of riced cauliflower on top of this too. Mm. If you want to add a little bit of crunch, this is a thought. That's kind of nice. And then if you want a breadcrumb on it, you can always do like an almond flour too. Such that a good point. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Or some of the um, lo lower carb breads toasted and Such made a great into point. Absolutely. Um, crumbs. And Such a good point. Brenda, you have a great question because this comes up a lot. Can you remind us, please, are carbs in the servings of fruit per day counted towards the 50 for losing? So in general, we recommend um, that people either go starch free, okay, for mm -hmm. the first six months yep. after surgery, or they count their carbs, 50 grams of net carbs or right. less per day. Right. Fruit is tricky because fruit has natural carbs in it. However, it likely will not inhibit your weight loss. Right. So what we want to make sure of is that we're getting some healthy carbs. I usually say, you know what, count the carbs if you want to, but if you're taking away the starches, you're already low carb. Exactly. So you don't have to count every nitty gritty carb that you get from fruit right so have your three servings per day or not right you know whatever you're in the mood for you don't have to force it down or avoid it right. altogether. Right. And, and and again guys remember your journey is unique so you may be like wow i can't you know i can't eat those three those three servings of fruit uh uh one month out and this other person can hey that's okay yeah all yeah. of our journeys are unique have your, you know, get, get two servings in instead of three. It's okay. Yeah. And totally okay. In terms of counting them, if you're really counting your carbs, you're going to see that um, it's a little bit higher on the carb end if you're using mm -hmm. um, fruits in your diet, right. and that's okay. Great point. So if you want to count maybe half of the carbs or if you want to allow yourself a little bit more, like carbs, like 60 or 70 carbs per day, yep. um, it'll change over time, though, because as you progress forward after surgery, you know, in the first three months, you might not be able to get up there, but in the you know year, two years, three years out, yes, you might be able to get to 50 to 70 carbs Absolutely. per day. I'm going to go ahead and pop these two guys All right. in. Let's do Got it. Got our oven preheated, guys, to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to pop these in. We're going to melt these up. They're going to be nice and, and gooey and delicious. Again, that's where that same sort of uh, uh, flavor profile that we know and love from a traditional macaroni and cheese. And it might be a fun way to kind of fool your friends, too. Oh, yeah. I like fooling. Um, Lauren, Danielle, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and Panther asks, is this good for restarting and getting back on track? Absolutely. Anything that we cook on this show is going to be um, okay for the first six months, so the starch-free zone, and um, for a lower-carb option. Yep. So we usually cook anything that's lower-carb and higher in protein. Absolutely. Those are the two things that we focus on. Exactly. And you'll see, too, especially with this upcoming dish, how we make these very simple substitutions to help reduce, help to improve that overall healthiness of the dish without mm -hmm. really compromising on that overall flavor. Yeah. And we have a lot of people on right now, so I want to thank you all for joining in. Yeah, thank in. you so much for tuning in, guys. This is our holiday episode. I uh, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Yes. I know I did. I know I had my protein first before I had my stuffing. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's not the time of year to beat yourself up. It's the time of year to have a little bit of balance. Correct. Okay. That's such a great point. Yeah. Such a great point. So we're going to start with our 93% lean ground beef. Again, 93%. Uh, that lean has to do with the amount of meat to fat that you actually have in the uh, grind itself. So 80%, 20%, 80% muscle, 20% fat. 
93% muscle, 7% fat. So this is naturally going to be healthier for you than an 80-20. Great. So we're going to go ahead and add this guy in. And then just in, in general, um, as a general recommendation for all of our patients, we recommend anything 90% um, or yep. higher. And we have the exact same thing here for our ground pork too. So it's yeah. a lean ground pork. Uh, again, 93% lean. I had to dig around a bit to find this because pork is usually a little higher, but yeah. had to dig Good. around a bit to find it. So we could I'm pop excited this guy to try in. it. Oh, me too. And right. like traditionally, when you see Swedish meatballs, you either see this stuff with a lot, a lot, a lot of heavy cream, mm -hmm. or you see the sweet and sour meatballs, which right. has a lot, a lot, a lot of sugar, like Absolutely. up to two cups of jelly. Such a good point. Yeah. So, so we've this got is going to have like our meatballs. We've got some allspice. We've got some nutmeg going in next. We've got our two egg yolks going in next. That little guy. Hey, Amen. All right, a little salt and pepper here. And Tiffany was asking um, how close the noodles taste to real noodles. I personally think that they have the chewiness of a real noodle. Mm -hmm. I do think that it's important to watch how much you are boiling them because Absolutely. it actually doesn't have instructions. Yeah. Um, it just says, literally, directions boil to desired texture. So you have to keep an eye on it and kind of try it along the way. I like my noodles a little bit more al dente. Mm -hmm. um, That's how I like mine. Or chewier. And, and keep in mind, guys, you can't down cook a noodle, right? So once you overcook it, it's overcooked. Right. You can't go back, you can keep going forward. So you're better off going a little bit under and being like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, than going way over and it's having to be in an ooey gooey chewy mess. So play it safe. Play it safe, exactly. Yeah, it's a little bit, the product itself is a little bit more expensive than Where your is typical. our more you know? Da, yeah. da, da, da. Um, so it's a little bit more expensive. Um, so you don't want to like blow a whole container of it. I would actually probably experiment a little bit with just one serving yep. of it. Such a good point. Okay, Such so a good point. Yeah. Yep. So we're doing our onions next. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and cut our onion in half here. Now, again, the all important, my my tip of the day here, uh, when you're cutting your onion, fingertips, tuck your fingertips in. The side of the blade should be going up against the side of the knife right here, right? Very, very simple. Very, 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 very important. Don't cut like this. Cut like this. So now we'll go straight down here. And does anyone sharpen their knives at home? Guilty. Okay. I, I say this only because it's much safer to have a sharper knife than to start, you know, grinding through an onion. You are much more likely to cut yourself with a sharp, with a dull right. knife than you are with a sharp knife. Right. The knife so does the work. It's just something to consider to get yourself a knife sharpener at home um, if you're using your knives a lot. Such a good point. All right, so we got our onions next. Okay, and then um, Chris was asking how you make an appointment. Um, if you'd like to get back on track, well, you just call the office. There you go. 443-849-3779. And then you can just ask to make an appointment with me. So I will see you there. All right, so we'll pop our onions in here as well. Now we'll go ahead and mix her up. All right. Everything all mixed up here. This is the fun part. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Always wash your hands afterward, of course. And um, Thelma was asking about um, the little ramekin bowls, or she wasn't asking about them, but she said that they looked like a good way to um, keep your portions lower. Oh, and for sure. I think it's it's so nice this to is, have your own set of, you know, ramekins, bowls, plates, yep. um, especially after surgery. It just makes things. Much it's simpler. so funny too because there's there's such a there's such a visual aspect to eating Absolutely. that that Jana touches on that's so so critical is the idea of. You know, if you set this huge plate in front of yourself, you're going to want to eat more. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just the way that we're psychologically wired. Yeah. Or if you use a smaller portion size or a smaller portion bowl, or just a smaller bowl in general, or a smaller plate, you're like, oh, I put less on my plate. Mm -hmm. You don't even think about it. You're like, what did I just, how did that just happen? What? Right. How did this thing happen? And this kind of is a good segue to mindfulness when you're eating. So um, important. Especially when mm -hmm. it is. Holiday time. Holiday and time, too indeed. Much stuff in front of you, and it's very, right? very difficult to just slow down and enjoy your company and enjoy what's going on around Seriously. you. Seriously, I mean, I know I'm, I'm so guilty of being an unconscious eater. Yeah. 
just you're not thinking mm-hmm. about it and you're talking with family and you're having a great time and holidays, 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 friends, 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 friends. And all of a sudden you've just eaten your entire plate and you go, oh, I gotta go run to the bathroom real quick because I ate too fast. And I've been there more times than then I care to admit, but it's so important. To all right, and hi, here. Mary, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Aaron, Nicole, Tiffany, Danielle. Thank you everyone for joining us. And see how simple this guy is? Pop that in. Cute. So great, so, so simple. Bring off a couple of these meatballs here. So you can do them this way, guys. If you're gonna do it this way, if you wanna just take it and kind of round it off here, pop it in, or you could take your hands, grab a small amount, weigh it out. Just do a quick little circle over here as well. Get that more traditional meatball. And again, we can always, you notice I backed off on the salt a bit on this dish. This is much, much easier. So you get a little bit more sodium from that beef broth and you're gonna get a little bit more sodium. Watch your sodium there. That's a, kind of a, a point I, I don't think I bring up enough. I don't mm-hmm. think we bring up enough is that uh, for sodium, you really wanna be mindful of, of stocks. You really want to look at those broths and right. stocks and just look at that sodium content. Because it's going to be so, so high. A good that, rule of thumb is just to choose the low sodium. Exactly. Yeah, great and point. And it'll say it right on the front, which is great. Yep. Great, great point. All right, right. so we're gonna go ahead and do our, let our meatballs render off here. Okay. Uh, So again, this is just over a medium heat. We've got a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Uh, I was gonna put a little bit of butter in here, but honestly, we don't really need it. Uh, Again, it's just really key to make sure that as we cook these meatballs, we're Mm -hmm. gonna cook them for about three minutes on one side, flip them three minutes on the other. Super straightforward, super simple. Uh, Again, medium heat, because you want to just slowly fry them. There's no need to kind of burn them. If If that pan's too hot, and they're gonna go right over the outside. They're gonna burn on the outside and not be cooked on the inside. Mm-hmm. And what's nice is that if you wanted to, you can do half of these as just regular meatballs for the week and yep. then the other half as the Swedish meatballs. Such a great so point. So you can kind of do a couple of different things with them, which is nice for uh, meal planning. Absolutely, the week. right? Yeah. And they're just a perfect little size. Bite size, you can just you know either pop them in or take a bite and do a little chew, yeah. and you're good. And I gotta say, a lot of people ask me, what, is, what are the best snacks? What are the best snack foods? Why not just have a mini meal of one yeah. or two of those and you're good to go for the next couple of hours, right? Two words, beef jerky. <laughs> Love, seriously, watch your sodium, but beef jerky is right. your friend. It's right. a great way to get the protein in, or honestly, too, those little yogurt cups, those little, uh, mm-hmm. what is it, the Oikos to 15 gram, yeah. like just another Fantastic. super simple way yeah. to just get a Boiled quick eggs, string cheese, pick rolled your, up turkey, pick your poison. Pick your poison, exactly. Um, and anyone that's just joining us, hi, Sean, thanks for joining. Hi, guys. Thanks, Joan um, and Melanie for joining us. We are, we just finished our mac and cheese that we cooked with the impossible low carb pasta. So we'll let you know how that turns out. Yep. And now we're doing um, half and half basically with um, a low, low fat, um, 93% beef yep. and um, also a lean pork. Exactly. So th- we're not doing turkey meatballs tonight, but you can absolutely do this with oh, turkey. You meat. can very easily substitute turkey in here as well. The only thing I might say is maybe add one more egg just to, just to, pick up that fat content mm-hmm. just a bit more depending on how lean ground your turkey is. Yeah, and um, I just want to mention some people are um, talking about making appointments and coming in. I am in the office Monday through Thursday, so you can make an appointment at any time. All you have to do is call the front desk. And um, I think that we posted the phone number, but if you don't have it, it is 443-849-3779. Yeah, these meatballs are looking amazing. And then also you can um, always become friends with me on Facebook and you can, um, Send me quick questions through Messenger or through Facebook. Feel free to tag me anytime. I'm happy to help out. Okay, how long do these need usually? So see guys, look at this. See how, see how great this looks? That's the color that we're looking for right here. That nice Maillard reaction on the outside. That beautiful browning. So I did about a minute and a half. I did about, about three minutes on that first side. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do another probably three minutes on the other side. Okay. Uh, and then we're gonna start building our sauce in the pan. And then we're gonna cook the meatballs in that remaining sauce. All right, cool. Super, super simple. Don't, no need to overthink it. Again, this is just, this is one of those, honestly, this is a great, great, great crock pot dish. Yeah. You could seriously do this, get it to this point, 
get the sauce made, drop it into a crock pot, set it, and forget it. Yeah. And if you're more of a sweet and sour meatball gal like I am too, I like any of these types of meatballs, um, you can always use the sugar-free jelly as well. Oh, good point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, yeah, again, just very, very simple additions here, guys. No need to really overthink it. No. Uh, again, in case you missed us initially with our impossible, mac and or impossible macaroni, uh, keep in mind that it is going to cook differently. The way you cook it is the same. The time you cook it is lower. So you're still gonna put a pot of water on, bring it to a boil, add the salt in after it come to, comes to a rolling boil, and then we're gonna dump the pasta in. You can still, you're cooking for a much shorter period of time because like Janice said, it's egg whites, fiber. It's fibers, it's um, a protein isolate, egg whites, and a little bit of durum flour. Right. And um, for anyone that just came on, I just wanna remind you that you can um, feel free to ask us questions while we're here. Absolutely, um, we love questions. Right, whether it's nutrition questions, cooking questions. Um, and I do wanna give a quick plug. Uh -oh. um, next Thursday yeah. is our big reveal. So it's from uh, 6.30 to nine. Um, I believe that it's 6.30 to nine or six to nine. We'll get the time on that. And um, and we're going to have a little promo afterwards. So if you stick around, you're going to see what you're going to be seeing yeah, I've, I've, on I've, Thursday. I was going to say, I've gone to the reveal a couple years in a row. It's such a good time. It's so much fun. You get to see all your friends. You get to catch up with the doctors. You get to catch up with Jana. You get to see everybody. And it's, it's such a fun time. Come on out. Celebrate. It's such a great event. Yeah, Can't say it's, enough about it's it. awesome. I've been there for a few years now, um, and it is just the best event of the year. And a lot so of people were fun. asking me what they should be wearing. You can wear anything that makes you feel comfortable Correct. and awesome. Um, some people get very dressy. Some people don't. Some people wear costumes. So it's up to you. All right, and um, Sean Watts was saying that he loves Thin Slim, and I actually really love Thin Slim as a company as well because hmm. um, their bread is really good, and then they have buns oh, nice. and all of this Perfect. other stuff. So Great. if you need something carby feeling, but you're still in starch free, or you're trying to keep your carbs on the lower end, Thin Slim is an awesome website, but you cannot find it typically in stores, so it's gonna be thinslimfoods.com. All right, so what I'm gonna do next here, guys, is we're basically cooking these meatballs off because we want to use the fat from these meatballs to make what's called a roux. Now, roux 101. Roux is basically fat and flour. That's a roux. There's different types of roux. You've got a blonde roux, a brown roux, and a dark roux. Dark roux are in your gumbos. Very traditional Louisiana cooking. Love it. It takes a long time to make. So we rented out our pan here. We're going to use the fat from our pan, from our beef and from our pork. We're going to take just a touch of our flour here. Again, we don't need a lot. We just need enough to start picking up some of that fat. And I just want to answer one quick question of how, um, how long after surgery you can have these. The meatballs you can have around the one month mark and the noodles you can have around probably three to four weeks in because they're pretty soft. So I'm going to do a quick tilt up of this pan just so you guys can see what we're looking at here from our side. See how this roux is starting to brown? That's what we want. We want just enough flour to pick up some of that fat in our pan here. There we go. So doesn't need to cook very long because of how little, because it's such a low amount of roux in here. And um, I do have a question for you. Why do we not use the egg whites in the meatballs? Oh, egg yolks. Yeah, why do we not use the egg whites? Oh, uh, it's a matter of... Um, well, we could have put the egg whites in there, but you're going to get a bit more richness from mm -hmm. the egg yolks, which is why you're not as opposed to the whites. Okay. All right, so we're going to saute this roux. Again, this is just meant to be sort of a light blonde roux. So you want to saute this very, very briefly, probably a minute, maybe over medium, you know, minute, medium heat, not very long. We're going to add just a touch of cream behind that. Very, very small amount. Again, we don't need a lot for this sauce. All right, and it's already starting to smell really oh, good. It's great. Again, wooden spoon is your friend here, guys. Can't recommend them enough. It really helps. You, you always hear Food Network, oh, wooden spoon, wooden spoon, wooden spoon. You want a wooden spoon because it helps, it helps to push off the, the stuff that's stuck in the bottom of your pan. And then finally, we're going to add just a bit of beef stock here as well. All right, that looks great. Mm-mm. 
Yum. All right, and for anyone again that's just joining us, thank you so much. Feel free to send in your questions, nutrition related or oh, cooking related. Smell that. It smells awesome. <laughs> Seriously. Oh wow. Guys, this it's is like why you've got to join us savory. in the studio because you get to smell these amazing smells that are coming off of this pan. Oh my goodness. We're gonna pop our meatballs back in. Let them finish cooking in that sauce. And this is where you'd crock pot the dish. Right. Right here. So we're making a much smaller version of it. Um, exactly. Just for tonight. Yep. But um, in the future, if you want to do this in the crock pot, that, that yep. would work very and well. And what you can also do is once you get these meatballs covered, you can pop, pop, pop cover on them, pop them in the oven, mm -hmm. and let them sit for about, you know, at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25, 30 minutes. Okay, great. And someone was asking um, what kind of cream. It's just a light cream, and yep. we're using a small amount of it. Exactly. Very, very minimal. Very, very minimal. So yeah, guys, we've got our meatballs cooked. Again, we want to cook that roux for a very brief period of time, minute, mm -hmm. minute and a half at the most, um, just until it really starts to perfume, starts to get a little bit of color in it. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and add in our cream after that. And then finally, we'll add in our uh, beef stock. Okay, cool. Super simple. And we have one big recommendation from Christopher uh, to actually come. So we always send out um, an invite to all of the patients that have had surgery um, to sign up. Yeah, for absolutely. We love, love, love having guest, 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 guest taste guest. testers. We are live. Yes. Guest, <laughs> guest taste testers in studio with us. It's so much fun. You get to be interactive. You get a nice, fun, behind-the-scenes view of this beautiful studio here at WMAR2. It's cool. You know, how was your holidays, guys? Give us a little rundown in the... Uh Give us a little rundown in the comment section. We'd love to hear about your holidays, how you felt, you know, if it was your first holiday after surgery, mm -hmm. first holiday before surgery. I had my surgery September 2nd of 2016. If I had been a little bit more foresight, I probably would have planned it after the holidays, but that was a bit of a challenge going into the right. holiday season, uh, having had that surgery as the last three months. Um, but honestly, you know, with so many of Janice's tips that really helped carry me through, it was just awesome. eating your protein first, not being overwhelmed. If you do feel overwhelmed, that's okay. Happens to everybody, happened to me. Just get up, walk away, have a little bit of water. Just mm -hmm. There's all sorts of things you could do to help you know, yeah, and get through that. Especially during the day, you wanna oh. make sure that you have your regularly scheduled oh. meals, like your breakfast and lunch, and then choose to Such have your dinner as your Christmas dinner, your Hanukkah dinner, whatever that and might honestly, be. Honestly, drink, drink your water, guys. Seriously, drink, drink, drink that water, man. It's It's... Well, the, the main reason people return to the emergency room and return to the doctor after sur post surgery is that right. is that dehydration. Right, and I, I I'm getting a couple of very positive comments on my sweater. Thank you, everyone. Oh uh, yeah. It used to light up, but it doesn't anymore. All right, mm. so oh. again, this is smelling so good. Yeah, Thank you so amazing. much for cooking this. I love Swedish meatballs. Yeah. This is, this is going to be amazing. It'll be a hit at the party. Oh yeah. These delicious, delicious meatballs. Okay. Yum, and yum, I'm curious, yum. did anyone make anything that was bariatric friendly for their Thanksgiving or is planning on making anything um, for their holidays? Because that's something Great that question. we would want to know too. Absolutely. And um, remember that Mindy, um, Mindy from our marketing department always sends out the form to sign up to become a taste tester here. So do look out for that. I'll send it also so people see it. Um, and just make sure, you know, if you're free and available on the next time oh, we have yeah. Sleeve Chef, um, sign up for it. It's really fun. So here's a pro tip, guys, in case your meatballs aren't cooking as quickly as you want them to. Okay. Super simple. Sean. Cover your pan. It's your friend. Okay. Sean um, is giving some advice to actually drink your water. I have a lot of people saying how hard it is to drink water, and um, I understand that. But you have to be able to bring your own water bottle everywhere. Such you a good have point. to. Yep. And taking sips on a regular basis, every 10 to 15 minutes, actually just taking a sip. Also setting alarms on your phone. Any reminders that you can give to yourself are yep. going to be really And helpful. honestly, too, guys, remember, reach out to that comp page and talk to fellow bariatric patients like myself who are, you know, you know, three years out and, and, you know, ask us for advice about, hey, I'm struggling with, with my water intake. What do I do? I mean, I know for me, my first month and a half, two months, I really struggled with my water intake because yeah. I could not drink 
you know, 90 fluid ounces. No. I was, I was 64 fluid ounces. So I was super, I'm like, oh my God, yeah, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Right. It's okay. Just, you know, just, just take your time, sip, 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 and then start getting, you know, get into the habit of doing that. You'll be amazed at how much you can actually consume. If you do something for, and I know this sounds like a long time, 60 days in a row, it becomes a habit. Such so, a great point. I mean, it's not, you know, miraculous. It takes a lot of work. It does. Um, it takes a lot of consistency, but you yep. can rewire the, yeah. the um, and, your brain. And honestly, just get your, and I think, like, you know, like Jana was saying, keep it near you. Yeah. Seriously, keep it in your, if you're, if you're sitting at work at your cubicle, keep it within view. Yeah. Whether it's on your left hand side, whether it's on your right hand side, whether right in view yeah and um we have lisa who um one of her successes this time around during thanksgiving was no weight gain which is That's awesome great, lisa. congratulations all right these are looking amazing oh and tova you're telling a funny story anytime you see someone else take a drink you take a drink too i won a whole game with Jana, and she didn't even know so she beat me in my own game um and, and she ended up drinking more water than I did at a support group. So mm. that's always fun to have a little mini competition with your friends. Absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and grab it. Here's our meatballs here. Look at these. This is my favorite, awesome. favorite, favorite way to serve these little guys. This is just in this nice, again, size, right? Serve these in our beautiful little pan here. I'll just go back in here for a little bit longer. Oh, lovely. Look at that. Oh, looks delicious. Looks delicious. All right. Mm -hmm. And anyone that just signed on, we are close to the finish, but we are. Um, you can feel free to ask any questions. Um, let us know what you're thinking. Any successes that you had over Thanksgiving? Anything, any goals that you have for the upcoming year? Um, we are just cooking some bariatric friendly mm. um, mac and cheese and Swedish meatballs, mm, mm, mm. which are our favorite comfort foods. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Mm, this is so good. All right, and while you're doing that, I'm going to take out yes, our mac and do. cheese. Okay. And we're going to split this up into Indeed. our ramekins. Yes. Show some of this on. That, oh, that looks so good. Do we have our ramekins over here. Yum, yum, yum. Should have some on the other side. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yum, all right. Yum. Perfect. All right. Let's dig in. This looks so good. Hi. Oh, okay. Yum. So I'm going to sure split this, this up. Real quick here. Pardon me. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so Yum. I'm serving about a half of a cup, which is, um, which is, and I'm eyeballing this right now, um, which is about what our um, nutrition label calls for. All right, Perfect. so why don't we try this while we're waiting? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Oh, this looks delicious. I'm so excited. Okay, and again, this is going to be the impossible pasta. Mmm. Okay. Yum. Mm. Good. I like it. Can't tell the difference. I like it. I can tell a little bit of the difference, but I think it mm. might be mostly because of the low-fat cheese. Mm-hmm. Seriously. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Mm. Oh, I love it. That is delicious. Guys, I think I'm. I'm. I think I'm gonna do stock in Impossible. Seriously. I love it. And by the way, because this has so much fiber, it is great for our gut. So, mm -hmm. good point. If you're having any issues going to the bathroom, this is going to be a great way to get more fiber. All right. 
a little bit of that. Give me a spoon real quick. Sure. What I'm going to do is we'll do these guys, and then we'll take some of this delicious, delicious sauce. Mm -hmm. Classic sort of way to serve this this little dish. Oh, this looks amazing. Yum, 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 yum. I'll take a couple of these, do a little bit of this. Okay. My favorite way. So, so simple. Oh, and Sean made the Thin Slim mac and cheese with shrimp and broccoli last mm, week. Look at this. That oh. sounds awesome. Amazing. Mm, mm, mm. Yum, yum, yum. And right. the um, Impossible Pasta you can get from ThinSlimFoods.com. All right. Would you like a, would you care for a meatball? Absolutely. All right. After you. Okay. I'm going to put it right next to my mac and Go cheese. Go for it. I'll try that? that sauce too. That sauce looks amazing. All mm -mm -mm. right, beautiful. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, it's wonderful. It's savory. Mm. It's a little bit sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, Very it's like tender. Nutmeg. Mm -hmm. mm. Beautiful. Delicious. I love this. So this is a great source of protein, mm -hmm. lean, and very filling. So this whole thing is probably going to fill you up, and it's only like a half of a cup to three-fourths of a cup mm -hmm. of food. So that's really good. All right. Well, thank you guys mm. so much for joining us. We had I had such a great time cooking this with you. I Seriously. mean, this is so good. And our comfort foods are abound. Seriously, this guys, season, Co comfort so. foods are your friends, man. So you can actually make these with tons of ingredients Absolutely. that are out there already. Absolutely. Um, and I want to ask you guys to stick around, um, see what we have in store for next week. At very, the very video. excited. And um, let me know if you have any questions. P please feel free yep. to keep in touch. Yep. Thank you guys so much for joining thank us. You, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All Happy right. holidays. <laughs> we will uh, we will see you next year and stay tuned for the upcoming reveal sh uh, promo. promo. Hey. <laughs> thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks.